good to see you. Good Everyone, this you. is Josie. I know, it's another Josie, which is confusing. Uh, we went to school together to get our master's degree in children's literature, and now Josie works for Little Bee Books. Josie's here to share with us about board books. So Josie, why do you love board books? I love board books so much because I think they're the most versatile of books, of really all books. Um, why? You can cover so many different topics in board books. I think almost anything, and they're so sturdy, right? You can throw a board book across the room. You can chew on a board book. You can bite it. You can stomp on it. It's mostly going to be fine. So they're great durability. They'll last a really long time. They're great for young kids, just for this reason. Um, but also, you can just like I said, you can cover so many different topics in them. You can do concept board books. You can do like full picture book length stories in board books. They're really such an adaptable medium. Can you show us some examples of what you mean? I would love to. Okay, um, I wanna start with the two classics of board book people, the queens of board books. Um, the first one is Sandra Boynton, incredibly classic. You probably read Sandra Boynton growing up. Um, she's just, just so many different fun board books with animals. I love her. We all love her. She's lots of fun. She has great little rhymes and things. Yes. Josie has a, Josie Snow has a rhyming board book. I have a non-rhyming one. Um, and one of the great things about her is the slight absurdity to all of it, which is a theme of board books and, um, a lot of children's books, especially because they're just funny. Right? Like this page makes me laugh out loud. Like, are you an upside down chicken? No, no, you're not. But also it's just the transition from the rest of them in the square to this. They're great, they're just such fun. And especially this one is a really interactive reading experience because the question is always, are you a lamb? No. And the kid will expect the no to be coming. And also it's funny. Of course they're not a lamb. Why would you think they're a lamb? Yeah, I think Sandra Boynton really kind of excels at interactive reading experiences. So I think of like Barnyard Beat as one of the ones that you, everyone gets up and dances with. And um, that one has questions. And then this one is like asking you to do different things. So can you find your towels and hang them up? And everyone has to do that. And so it's great that way. We are. I remember my childhood favorite, I'm looking on the back of this book, was But Not Hippopotamus. There's just so many great ones and everyone knows them and everyone, yes, that one, amazing. Yes. Yeah, they've been around forever. She's still doing well. This one's from 2010, so it feels like a pretty recent Sandra Borton, but yeah. Yeah. So many great ones. And the other queen of board books is Leslie Patricelli. She's a little bit more recent. Um, she does social emotional board books. And we always have the baby who goes through different things. So Josie Snow has blankies. And I have Mad, Mad, Mad. And I agree, because I love these books because they're an introduction to stories in a really easy way. There's a plot, but it's not a heavy plot, right? It all focuses on one thing happening, you know, like a baby throwing a tantrum, being upset. Um, I also think they're kind of fun for parents too. Like in this one, I love this dad a lot. It's such a relatable moment where like the child doesn't want to go off, but he doesn't want to stay in. And like the dad's face, it's just so, I personally think it's hilarious. And everyone's met a toddler who has these days. Yes. Um, mine is a little bit like, it just is all about why he loves his blankie and what the blankie does with him. But what I love is that sometimes the story is carried through the illustrations. Like the words might not always Mm -hmm. show the what's happening but you can tell like right here the blankie is with him when he's getting at, uh, to the doctor and he's a little worried but the blankie is being hugged and so he's feeling better you know yeah I love in these books how really it's the pictures that do more of the work than the words which is especially relevant in the back matter so back matter is stuff in books after the main storyline. So like adult books, you'll have glossaries and indexes kind of and stuff like that. But board books can have it too. And these are such great, just early introduction to that kind of stuff. It also reinforces the learning. And it's a great tool for like almost learning to read because you have a very simple action coloring and the word. And it's so easy to know what is the baby doing and what is this word along with it. 
yeah, it really reinforces the learning from the book because it's all the things and more things that weren't covered in it. Yeah. And it is one of the things that board books do is they are built often to build vocabulary and to introduce things to concepts. And so to have that as a part of the book, as well as a part of the story is great. Yeah, because it's not necessarily a concept book, but I love concept books, including Baby's First Words, which used to be a tab board book and I missed the tabs, but it's fine, they got rid of the tabs. Um, and this is a vocabulary book. So it's just like learning, simple words. There are a lot of board books like this. Um, I love this book because it has what I call the gold bug effect. You know, gold bug from Richard Scarry. And oh. there's the things that go on every spread, there's a gold bug. So this book on every spread has a woolly mammoth. A lot of board books do this. Um, so it's fun. It's a fun thing for kids to find the woolly mammoth on every page, for them to discover there is one on every page. And then you can also go through and just see what is he doing? Because he's doing different things like right here, he's coloring. So there's so many different levels to this book. It's a great example of how board books can age with your child. Yeah, um, they're really, really little. They might just find one thing like this is a fire truck that they want to look at all the time and talk about it. And you can talk about them and be like, yeah, that's a fire truck. You have a fire truck. What noise does fire trucks make? And then as they get older, maybe, oh, you can talk about these are all different transportation words. What other transportation words? Um, Oh no, do you have another example? Yeah, I love how also you can follow the two dads in this story. You kind of see this is a stay at home dad. He's the one who's there caring for the kid every day. And then in this one, you can kind of see the other dad comes home in the corner. So there's a lot of different elements to this, a lot of different storylines you can follow, but they're not written. So it's a great way for like self exploratory reading, discovering new things just through illustrations that's really empowering for kids and encourages creativity and it's just fun. That's cool. What's next? Love it. Another concept book, this is a little bit more elevated, is Animal Colors. So this is a color book, as you can clearly see, right? We have blue whales, yellow lions, but then yes, it does that thing Josie's showing where it combines them into something new. I love this because it's a great example of collaborative reading too. Everyone is reading this book on the same level. Like the caretaker reading this is not any smarter than their kid. They don't know what these are gonna combine to any more than their kid does. So it really puts everyone on an equal playing field and just shows like, you know, like there really isn't an age limit There's for board books. Everyone can enjoy them. I love this. I When I first read this book, I was just so excited to see what would come next. And the surprise and like the humor of it made me laugh multiple times. Yes, I laugh out loud reading these books. It's a whole series in case you're interested. Um, I guess I should say little, I work for Little B Books, Little B Publishes these books. Um, you know, just a statement of interest. But they're just hilarious. Like the puns, it's a whole new level. Um, you know, like whoever would have thought to combine a yellow kangaroo and a green mouse? I wouldn't. Not me. Um, and then also this book, again, has back matter. I love back matter, if you can't tell. Um, and just like reinforces everything, but also it's a fun way to see all the colors and color combining together in different ways. Also, in that example, you just showed the yellow moose green or the yellow kangaroo green moose, and it became this, this thing, which I was like, this is chartreuse, which is a color that I did not personally like know what the color was in yeah. all this page. I had heard the word. I didn't know what it was. I also love at the end of the book, they combine all the animals and I won't show it to you. You have to get and see what they all combine to yourself. Yes. But it's just so fun yeah. for everyone, um, which brings me to this whole concept and category of books which I call the adults introducing kids to things they love books. Mm -hmm. um, this is Baby Feminist. There's also great examples of this are Baby Love Quantum Physics. There's a little whole little myth series like Little Miss Jane Austen and there'll be like a board book of Pride and Prejudice. Like there's one for Wuthering Heights. There's tons of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I think we have one for Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of classics and there's a whole series of like Baby Loves different like scientific fields and all this stuff that's funny because, you know, babies doing quantum physics, but also is informative. Um, that's mainly a thing that parents are buying because they love it and they want to read this with their child. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so cool because 
if there's an area of interest to you, there is probably a board book about it. And while your baby may or may not remember reading this book with you, they will remember the multimodal experience. There's something for them to listen to with the, your voice, you're holding them. They can see things and play with them. And just that bonding that you get from that is so, uh, so wonderful and so powerful. So to have things like this for parents or caregivers, it's really important. Yes. What else is really cool about this book though? I love this book so much because it's lift the flap. Um, and there are a few different elements to these flaps. There are die cuts, which is where you can see there's a rocket ship here, but the picture from here, and there's a hole right here, the rocket ship shows through, which I think is super fun. I love these, I love lift the flap, but I love these flaps in particular. So in the same place on every spread and they're really sturdy. You can kind of see how well they're attached. So they're not going to easily rip off and the kid always knows where they are. It's not frustrating to be able to find them. It's not frustrating to lift them up. And then in the same way, under the flap, it's always the same word, right? It's always baby. So the kid can come to, you know, ex learn to anticipate what's happening next and what they're going to say and really be a part of the reading experience with it. Yeah, it's another learn as you grow book and read as you grow because at first they may just be having so much fun like I can play with this and then later they'll realize oh there's words under there and then maybe later way older they'll realize ah oh, this is a book about really cool people. Yeah and in the back it tells you a little bit more about the people. One thing I love is um, it tells you it's just a really small thing but the year they became a baby um, not like the year you're born, it's the year you became a baby, which I just think is very cute. And it's great for centering the baby, centering children in a text, which yeah. I love so much. I love this is one of my favorite board books. I absolutely adore it. It's so fun. But talking about books you can play with, there are a lot more novelty elements than just lift the flap. Lift the flap is probably the most common. It's one we all heard of. Um, but there are a ton more, including Unicorn Munch. This book has pull tabs that make teeth move for this unicorn on every page. That's so cool. We just got this book. Um, it's checked out already, so I can't show it to you, but it is cool. And there are other books that you can play with. So like I have this one and each page has different types of teeth that you can play with and experience and like feel um, so that you can put your finger in different mouths or see what different animals have teeth for. Yeah. Another thing I love about this is how interactive it is. Besides just kids can pull the tabs as you read it, they can also really explore this book alone. Like I said, it is a tool to play. Like, look and see, okay, so what on the other page is making the drinking fountain? Oh, it's this part of the illustration. Um, one thing I love about Unicorn Munch is um, it's an introduction to slightly more complex storytelling. There is a definite plot to this book. They're on a mission to build a cake. And, a, and it's a kind of like a great step to moving towards books with plots and more storytelling like picture books. Picture books though can also be board books. There's a lot of um, board book conversions of picture books. It's very popular. Some I think work better than other ones. But one thing I love is, especially for this book, I think it works really well because board books are completely flat. So what you call in the middle where like pages come up. Um, which happens in picture books. It's always kind of fun, I think, with board books that are picture books because they're, they're, they're smaller. So they're easy to fit in your hand if you're like a small child, especially, and you want just a personal story. But also it's fun because you can take them traveling, you can fit more of them, and they're not gonna get ripped or damaged as well. But the art part, is one I hadn't thought of before that you can lay it flat and see the whole picture. So I was thinking of the tree scene here and how- Oh yeah, that's a good one. In this book, it looks like I can see Peter climbing up and then sliding down. Yeah, like that one. But in another one in the picture book, there's definitely more of a, mm -hmm. a bubble. Yeah, it, picture books interrupt the spreads a lot just because that's how they're bound, how they, work but board books don't do that and you can get so much closer so think you're sitting there's usually a child in your lap while you're reading board books and they are 
right up here or so close to the art, which I think really makes it stand out and it's so special in ways that I feel like almost transcends the picture book experience for some of these books. That's kind of a brave statement. That is a very brave statement. Um, coming from a true board book lover. But then again, some, I, like, I don't think all picture books work as board books. Some are too long and become really clunky. This is thick, but I do think it still works well. Yes. But, and because it's read aloud, this book, if you've ever read it, is designed to be read aloud. I find it impossible to read it just to myself. The words demand to be spoken. They're beautiful poetry. So I think it works better with books like that. Right. And there's some where the publisher, for whatever reason, wasn't, didn't keep things. So like the Chicka, Chicka Boom Boom one is famous for having a very different ending in the board book than it does in the picture book. And so you have to decide which version you like better. Yes, that's true. Not, yeah, we said not all work better, but the ones that do, I think work better as board books. And there's some story board books that are just board books. Uh, this is a great one. My heart fills with happiness. Is and it is, it's a story. It's a very simple story, but it's not, there isn't a picture book version of it. I love this book for many reasons, but one thing I love is how it sections off the text really well. So for a while we start, the text is on the left-hand side of the page and then the new section, kind of a new grouping and the text is on the right-hand side of the page. Did you want to talk about uh, Yeah, Sorry. I noticed that the, the things, when it switches over to the text being on the other side of the page, at first is like things that you do with other people or that other people do to make you happy. And then when you come to this one, it's things that you can do to make yourself happy and like things that you don't necessarily need other people for. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, there's so many, I didn't notice that before. And there are just so many great different like small things board books can do to convey meaning. Um, I absolutely love it. I also, it's just the thing, I love how this book ends in a wordless spread. I love a good wordless book. Um, and it's just so beautiful. And this and is so a great example of what you were talking about with the page divider. Cause I think in a picture book, it would be kind of like mm -hmm. yeah, and, bumpy really and it wouldn't meet quite as well. Um, and so here you have this yeah. stretch. It's good. Yes, it's so fun. And the last category of like storybooks, especially as board books, is lap books. Lap books I find slightly ironic because they're harder to read with someone in your lap, but they're called that because they're big. You can see they're so much bigger than the other ones. They take up your whole lap while reading them, especially when they're open. Um, they're great for group reading. So if you're reading to multiple kids, it's a lot easier versus a small board book, right? Like try to read this with multiple kids in front of you who aren't sitting in your lap. It's just so much smaller. It's harder to see all the details. Big books do a great job. And then also because they're so big, if a child is reading this by themselves, they can spend so much time with it, looking through all the spreads, finding all the details. I've had this book for years, absolutely love it. Something I just noticed today while reading through it is there's a whole storyline that's independent of the text with these dogs. And you can see the dogs on almost every page somewhere, tiny in the spread. And there's a whole thing with that until the dogs become big and they take up the whole thing. Here they go. Yes, the dogs take up the whole spread and then you can still find them kind of in the middle. So it's like the middle of the storyline with the dogs and then they go back. Um, and they are in there, not on almost every side of the book, which is just fun. And that's something, you know, when you're reading it to multiple kids, you're probably not gonna see because it's tiny, but it's an additional experience. As we said, board books age with your child. So as they grow up, as they're reading them by themselves, there are new things for them to discover. And especially, this board book has more complicated back matter. We're talking about stages of the moon. We're talking about different animals you see at night. Um, so it is a great way tool for this board book to be used for older kids 
as a learning tool as well. And something else about board books that is cool is that when they are open, their pages aren't prone to like blowing away or mm -hmm. changing, yeah. um, which for some kids is really important because they want to spend time looking at those details and they don't want to have to worry about like, oh, no, I'm going to lose it. They have that chance to. Yeah. Really yeah board books just, especially once you've had them for a while and you, you know, use them, the spine gets a little used. They will stay open to a page really, really well. They're just so, they're so versatile. There's so many different things you can do with them. And there's so many great tools that it can be used for um, and different things they can do within themselves. I don't think you can do in other book mediums. Yeah, I think of some of the board books that have like sound buttons embedded in them and you would never find that anywhere else in the book world, right? Because not only are they like a toy, but they're also incorporating other senses and you don't have room for some of something like that in a, in a different type of book. You have to have these board pages. Yeah, like there's all the great touch and feel books. I'm remembering there are puppet books. You have a beautiful shaped board book behind you. Yeah. There's just so many things you can do with a board book. Yeah, or like this one is, it's got all of the cool cutouts mm -hmm. that with regular paper might not be as successful because you can't. And there's so many other novelty elements that we didn't go over, but you know, there are sliders, there are wheels. There's just so many, guys, I love the polka dot books. I personally find them so fun to play with. Me too. <laughs> They're so relaxing. Yeah. It's like playing with bubble wrap. You get to press down the things mm -hmm. every page. Yeah. They're just a great interactive reading tool. Something that I think everyone can enjoy, right? It's a great way to start kids learning reading, to like reading, find reading enjoyable. But then also it's a great, I think as an adult to come back to and be like, reading is fun. And it can be fun, not just mentally, but physically as well. Yeah, that's an, a, a really cool statement. I had never thought about making it fun tactically and how great board books are doing at that, but they do kind of make it easier to play with, with your hands or to like look through. This I love that. Ah, I love it. <laughs> and um, if you were to have a favorite type of board book, what would you have it be? I really love the lift the flaps where the flap is sturdy and in the same thing on every page. I babysat a lot of kids and there are a lot of two-year-olds who like the idea, but either their strength's too much for them and they rip the flaps off or the flaps are just really hard to peel up and they can't find them and it gets really frustrating you know and we don't need a mad 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 situation while reading a book so that's why i love the baby feminist book um, and there are a lot of other board books that do this too i can think of there's a curious george valentine's day book where it's almost it's a flap at the end of it like this that you open up and that's not technically a board book it's like a really thick card stock picture book actually um, but it's a concept where in the same page, they know what to do. So it's not frustrating. It's just, it's exciting. They know how to read the book and interact with it. I think of the who's hiding books that have the piece of like felt in them and you can Ooh, yeah. look at mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah. That's cool. What makes them unique from a publishing perspective? I think they're really fun because you can do so many different things with them, right? Like we can have the books where we do board book conversions of best-selling picture books, which is great. But then you can do, you know, you do the concept books. You can do a lot of different novelty books like this, or you can just think of so many different elements you can put into it. Like you don't have to be confined to just doing one thing like that, right? You can have pull tabs, you can have sliders, you can have wheels, you can have all of them in one book. Um, so it's fun to think about that. I know our design team at Little B talks about how much they liked doing the novelty books because of the challenge and it's fun and fun to 
you know, make it line up so it's on the, so the eating's on the right side of the page each time. There's so many different things you can do with them. And I also love how they feel like such different experiences just based off of the trim size of them. Like you have a small board book versus a big board book. And if you look, there's only about an inch or so of difference in these trim sizes, but it feels like such a different experience reading them, um, which is fun. Like, do you want like an intimate experience for the book or do you want a slightly bigger experience? Yeah. There are just so many, I feel like the possibilities are endless with them and they can be as long as you want. This board book has 40 pages, if you count like one, two, which is a lot. That's a ton for a board. Look how thick it is. And it has this fun, like not quite padded cover. There are some with padded covers, which I also love, but it's a different cover. It's like a standout cover compared to a board book like this, where the cover is the same trim size as the rest of the book and it's the same material. There's so many different ways you can customize them. I hadn't thought about it being as customization, but I guess that is customization to the story and making it cool that way. Yeah, like I do wish I had the old baby's first words, which should have tabs along the side. So that was really fun. You can move to different pages. You could move to different parts of the story. The newer editions don't have it. I don't know why, um, but that was a great way, almost as like a tool for teaching kids about indexes. You know, you were going through the day a little bit. So kind of the concepts of like breaking up your day into different categories. Like there's just so many different things and each, I feel like different tool that board books use is saying something differently. It's helping kids and families and everyone who reads them kind of think about the world differently, break things down, maybe in a different way than they were before. It sounds like the possibilities are endless. They are, and that is the joy of board books. Thank you for sharing board books with us today. Thank you so much for asking me to talk about them. I could do this all day. Well, maybe you'll come back sometime and talk more about them. I would love to. Have a great day.